All right then. So let's start looking at getting some threat intelligence in and starting to uh, create block lists based on mind meld. Okay. Obviously, I've said before about Cortex XOR, and yeah, you know it's it's absolutely fantastic. But if you haven't got the budget for it, then you are just as e easily using mind meld. Mind meld is is absolutely awesome. I'd, I really love it. And from Palo Alto Networks, this is completely free. Um, you just got to find your way around it, which isn't actually as difficult as it first sounds. <clears throat> so. This is the dashboard when you first uh, start it up. You see I've got 2,000 indicators uh, from the miners. The nodes are reporting 5.9 thousand and output is 2,000. Okay, so these are, this is a total of stuff that's been dropped, stuff that's been cleaned up. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a, we're gonna create a new feed, a new miner, sorry, we're gonna create a new aggregator, I'm gonna create a new output. And we're going to do it using this. And this is blocklist.de. Uh, the malware that's on here, the IP addresses are on here have all been observed trying to break into FTP servers. They are malicious FTP servers, malicious HTTP servers, uh, phishing IP addresses, and, and so on. And so this is what we're going to do. We're going to use this. I'm going to create an EDL feed, and then we're going to stick that on the, on the firewall as a to and from blocklist. Okay. So, first thing we need to do is need to work out how to get all this into mind meld. Well, there's a couple of ways of doing it, but I find the easiest way of doing it is if you go to the existing nodes. Here's one that I created earlier, a bit of blue Peter for you there. Okay, so if we just click on it like this, we can go to the prototype that, that we created it from. And then we are creating a new one from this prototype, which we are going to call blocklist.de list. Blocklist.de blocklist malware VPC. Okay, confidence is medium. Yeah, stick with that. Okay, so then coming down here, we're going to change this to list D IPs, and then this we're going to change for our IP address, our URL, sorry, which is. that one okay so now we've got a name uh, share level is green I, I don't see any reason to change that from the original from Talos this is a well known feed uh, names have been changed and the URL that we're getting it from has been changed okay so now we need to create a node with that so config Add a node. Okay, so our node is going to be de oh, minor prototype is going to be our prototype we have just configured, which will be a mine meld local blocklist.de. Okay, no input nodes because it's not accepting any. Um, it's not accepting any information from a process that's happened previously. This is echoed and, in fact, expanded upon throughout Cortex XOR as well. The idea of this is essentially a processing uh, process. <laughs> um, so basically, you've got an input, it does something with it, and then provides an output. So in this particular instance, we have miners which have no inputs because they are the input, they have an output. The output goes to the aggregator. The aggregator has an input and an output. The output to that goes to the input of the output. And then the output has no output because it is an output. You'll get it. Don't panic. Okay, so now we've created that. And we can see that we have our miner there. Okay, so going back to our nodes. 
Now what we want to do is we want to create an aggregator. Go to that. Again, new. I'm going to change the name of this. Aggregator. Uh, leave everything as is because we've all we've literally done is taking it from a working aggregator, which is IPv4. Okay. Now we need to create a node for that. Block Gibby. Block list. D-A-G-G. And then our prototype is again going to be the one we just created. Uh, which is going to be that one. You'll see, you'll notice as well, anything that's created uh, already on the box comes with a standard library or where it's come from, essentially. Anything that we create or you create is then uh, prepended with my mode local. Select that. Okay, and our input nodes are going to be our block list D mine EC. So that's how it is. So that's the name, the prototype that we're running it from, and then the miner. And we can see that there. Okay, and now we need to create a output feed. Now, you can, any of these, I'd go for high confidence. And then, again, on the prototype, I'm going to create a new one. If I could type, it would be awesome. No, it's not an output. It's an output. Right. Uh, so, EDL for high confidence indicators, just to give it some high confidence indicator. Jesus. Right. Uh, leave that as it is because there's absolutely no reason again to change that because this is from a working um, indicator. Okay, add that. Back to config. And then we need to create a node which is our block list e e out put did it again and then our prototype was if I can find it it was our my mode local block list D output and our input node is our processor okay And so now we have our miner, our processor, and our output. We'll commit that. It will restart the engine. You see this as it's doing stuff. Engine stopped. Engine starting. Assuming all is well. So now if we go to our nodes, we can see that we've got our aggregator, miner, and our output. And at the minute, they are just polling and picking up the the data uh, from there. Once that's done, they will then move into their respective sections, and we can then go to the to the URL and we can browse the output. Okay, so now we can start to see that we are getting um, indicators to our block list output, which is coming from our aggregator which is being mined from our miner. As you can see we're up to 30.6 indicators which is going to give us a lot more protection from those particular IPs which are obviously being, being flagged as malicious for one reason or another and then moving from there we could I mean we could easily just change that if we go into there we can add another one into there or we can remove it. It's infinitely configurable absolutely infinitely configurable. Just to show you the output as well, so if I go to there and then click on that, you can see that that is the list 
that we're going to get. Okay, so now we need to create the EDL. So I'm going to go over to Firewall and I'm going to create the EDL that's going to then consume these, uh, these indicators so that we can start benefiting from that that protection and again it's it's very important to take into consideration that all of this is open source all I'm paying for is a very very small instance um, which in my case obviously is in ESXi so it doesn't really cost me anything but if you were to put it in um, AWS for instance um, it, it wouldn't cost you a lot to run it's only a, a dual core box so okay so I'll move over to the firewall and I'll see you there in a minute. Okay, so now we're on the firewall, and we've gone to objects, external dynamic lists, and we're going to add our dynamic list. Now, remember, of course, they don't get populated until you've added the the dynamic list into a firewall rule. That's the only time it starts to drag the uh, the indicators from it. So this is going to be block list. D. It is an IP list. The URL that we're going to is there, and we can test the source URL. It's accessible. That's all good. Check for updates every five minutes. It's say hourly because it doesn't change every five minutes anyway. So there's no point having added um, added traffic going across the network. Now, if I wasn't so lazy, I would have put a proper certificate on my my meld but I haven't so that is where you'd put that so you'd get the uh, certificate profile for it so that it knows that it's talking to the right one that could easily be something for our next video okay so currently at the minute there's no list entries so we're going to create a list okay then we're going to go to our policies security policy I have uh, dropped badness and the destination is going to be the same actually. So we're going to add that, we're going to add our new uh, dynamic list which and use uh, source, sorry, getting cocky there, source external dynamic list, blocklist.de. And again, uh, it actually is deny, and then log it to that. That's so that on Cortex itself, which we're also running, of course, we can then see any hosts that are trying to make contact with those IPs, or vice versa. Okay, and we are going to commit that. And then once it's committed, we're going to come back and we're going to have a look at the list entries. And so now, if we go to objects, external direct list, we've got a block list.de. See that? that's when we're updating it. And if we go to list entries and exceptions, and there we have our list that's being blocked. So we are now being protected against a further 28,545 malicious IPs. As they're removed from the list, they will automatically be removed from that list, so we're not going to ultimately just end up cutting off the entirety of the internet. Already have these at the top um, because that's free from Palo Alto Networks. You just list that you can subscribe to absolutely free for your firewall, and that's it. And then we have we've configured our nodes, we've configured our feeds, we've configured our outputs and now we're consuming it on the firewall in order to uh, increase our security posture.